Hello, welcome again to Going for a Song, and once again we've got for you not only interesting things, but interesting people. And first of all, we meet a man who says he makes a point of not collecting antiques because he lives in a glass house. Trumpeter extraordinary Humphrey Littleton. Hello. And uh, taking him on, on the other side, is somebody who's interested in Victoriana, Joyce Blair. Good afternoon. And we welcome back on the specialist side here, a man who knows about all sorts of extraordinary things, Roger Warner. Hello. And if he should fail, well, there's Arthur, who has such a wide range of knowledge as well. Arthur Hel Ligas. Hello. So let's have our first object, please. And now for viewers at home only, this flintlock pistol mounted with a silver crown is a tipstaff. Tipstaffs were used as a symbol of authority to make an arrest. The maker's mark on the silver is that of R and S Hennel, whose name also appears on the pistol. The silver has the London hallmark for 1814. Humphrey Littleton's first honour here. My goodness me. This is the most extraordinary looking thing <laughs> that I think I've ever seen. It's surmounted by this crown, a silver crown here. Uh, this bit unscrews and out comes a sort of rudimentary screwdriver or a... No, I've, I'm absolutely baffled by this. It looks to me as though uh, it's uh, going to be on the lethal side. In fact, there's a little fellow here, a little bit there that, that comes out. No, I thought one moment that it might be a trigger, but I'm pulling it and it hasn't gone off, so... I'm glad uh, you were pointing it skyward. <laughs> <laughs> I'm absolutely baffled by this. I should say that it was date-wise, I should put it, I suppose, at uh, about, or oh, 1800. Beyond that, I'm going to, oh, there's, yes, yes, 1800. And so Joyce nice. will now tell us what it is. Yes. Oh, Are you baffled oh, too? <clears throat> Well, uh, I don't know whether any of... Oh, there's a, a mark here. It is very beautiful silver. I don't know, is that sort of chased or what? This lovely crown on the top. It's sort of loose-ish. It's... Is it just something to do with the weather? <laughs> I don't know, that does come out, or does it... I don't know, is it a sort of a pretty bottle, that... Would it stand... No, it doesn't stand up. I think it goes like that. No, it doesn't. <laughs> I don't really know what it does. Oh, I've it dropped does it. That. Oh, well, never mind. I'll pick that up for you. Will you? Yeah. So I don't really know what it is, but I think it is earlier. I think it's about, um, oh, um, late 16th century. Late 16th or 18th, mm. that puzzle. Yes. It looks a bit like the original Commons bauble. Um, what do you think, Roger Warner? There's this bit that's come out. Well, I'm very puzzled indeed. I've never seen anything like this before. Holding it like that, it looks like a tipstaff or small mace. What's a tipstaff? Uh, well, a sign uh, of authority so that the representative of the sheriff could come, hammer at your door, uh, say, open up in the name of the sovereign. And frequently at the end, you had in the summons to the law court. Here, it looks to me as if, having knocked at the door, if there was any trouble, you pointed it round and that you have got a pistol. Here is a piece of flint which seems to be striking down. Uh, and there's a name of Hennel and Co, who were famous gunsmiths in the second half of the 18th century. Uh, I've never seen one before, extraordinarily rare, and I would think that you arrived uh, to arrest the criminal. Uh, if there was any sign of trouble, you quickly pulled it round and uh, shot him when he tried to escape. So you're going for a tipstaff? I'm going for a tipstaff, but you've completely stumped me on this one. Arthur, have you well, seen that? No, I've never seen anything like this. I'm just going to see if it does fire. Why not? take the thing out in case it's got a bullet in. Stand on one side. <laughs> yes, it's quite right. Well, that must be right what he said. It's a flintlock pistol made by Hennel. Um, 
I'm, yes, as, oh, it's got, it's silver mounted, of course, uh, as he has said. The date is a capital T, M-N-O-P-Q-R-S-T, 6 on to 1808, makes it 1814. Quite right. right. Now, there's the date. Yes. Well, was um, Harold still going then? Uh, he, uh, well, I thought he was earlier, but he might, I think he must have been. He certainly looks. He must have been because we've got the address this side, mm. Foster Lane, London. I was wondering they, whether that was an adaptation, whether it had been mounted onto it. But well, do you think it, it, it might well have been? Of course, who can tell that? Unless you've got. I can't see the. Um, I can't see the uh, the silversmith, but it could be S and R Hennel. Funnily enough, it, yeah. it, they're so badly. Uh, uh, the, uh, the assay mark is so badly rubbed, but it looks as though it could be SH, and then would it be RH underneath with S and R Hennel, who were also yeah. very fine silversmiths. Is that the same Hennel? That's the same Hennel who I believe today is still in business in Southampton Row. Right. Now, there's no one thing that neither... I mean, you've, you've got it in your guess beautifully. It is a tip staff, but it is, as you said, a very rare one. And you haven't pointed out one thing about it, the bit at the end. Can you tell us what that is that comes out? Uh, no, I can't. It's very interesting, Roger, <laughs> let me tell you, because um, apparently, don't put it back if you don't mind, because I'll show you how, this turned you from an ordinary tip staff into a water bailiff. This was the ore, <laughs> and you could arrest people by just going, <laughs> sorry, I won't, won't uh, put it in because I'm taking too long, but by just putting that on, you could arrest them on the river as well. <laughs> don't you think it's rather nice? I think it's a yes, super maybe. thing, that. So there you are, they've said it's very rare, it's obviously a collector's thing, and um, dispelling any doubt, I think, that it might have been, it was originally made just like that. So, uh, Humphrey, I think they're going to put a bit on that as a collector's thing, although, of course, it's 1814. Yes. It's only useful today, too, a sort of combined cosh and, uh, and pistol. Uh, 450 pounds. 450 pounds, I'm bid there by Humphrey Littleton, and uh, waggling the all around. What do you think, Joyce? Um... I think uh, 450 Humphrey. I think 600 pounds. Well, you're nearer the mark. They put a thousand on it because it's so rare, and obviously a thing that collectors would go for in a very big way. Five to nil then. Joyce leads, and what an interesting first piece that was. Yes. Five to nil. Let's see what happens with the second one. This English vase is an example of agate ware. The body is made of cream ware and is decorated with a marbled glaze. The base is made of black basalt and is impressed with the mark Wedgwood and Bentley. Date about 1775. Joyce Blair's first turn at this one. And mind the lid, yes. Yes, I will. In fact, it might be as well to take it out. Yes, I think. The, the base is quite close as well. Well, it is a small urn, and uh, it has this stopper in. I should think it was for, um, I don't know, they put dried leaves in and um, sort of scent thing or something. This is a pretty smell came out or something, although I don't see any holes for it to come out. I'm going to take the stopper off so that I can turn it upside down. There is a mark, and it's got... Ooh, it's Wedgwood and Bentley. So it is Wedgwood. The colour is um, brown and greens, for people who do not have colour television. Brown and green, sort of like the paint are sort of blended together. And it has... I think this is gold coming off on, on, on white, on these swags here. I think they're called swags. Um, I would think that is about... Um, Ooh, early 1700s, something like that. I really, I'm not quite sure about this. First quarter of the 18th century? Yes. Okay, Humphrey? 